Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about making snap judgments on, about people and about their character and about their influence on others uh, on the basis of biases and prejudices um, and how we can get beyond that and like specifically how the most effective way to get beyond that is to stay out of the thoughts in your own head and actually observe people's behavior. I want to give some examples of biases that I think are really prevalent in our society and how they've played out with people I know. Uh, one bias that I think exists that can be very strong is in relationships when there's like an older guy that gets involved with a younger girl, especially when the age difference is larger, there's often an assumption that the guy is being sort of like predatory or that there's something unhealthy or unwholesome going on. One of my friends, when she was in college, she started getting involved with a guy who was much older than her. He was in his early 40s, I think, and people I knew spoke really disapprovingly of this guy. Um, and I kind of got roped into it, like I was thinking about it in the same way that the other people were. Like they were saying like, oh this is really bad, and like why is she with this guy, and so on. I mean, like fast forward ten years or so, and now I have some hindsight, and I can look back. I know so many people who have gotten divorced, and who have these really ugly situations. This one friend I was talking about, she seems like she's in a pretty good situation, a lot better than some of my other friends who married people close to them in age. Um, I know people who have been raped and sexually assaulted by their significant others. Um, I know people who have been in abusive relationships. And so, all of these things, like people, like these relationships that went sour, people weren't, weren't like, saying that things were throwing up red flags the whole time. Like, uh, I know a lot of people who are like, oh, these people are cute together, and then, like, s really bad stuff ended up happening. Uh, racism is another way that this can play out. Uh, typically I don't see the problem in uh, the, like, my generation and younger, I see the problem in how, like, the older generation tends to view, like, relationships and things between people our age. But it's not just romantic relationships, it can be, like, how people treat someone when they walk into a store. Like, I know there's this bias a lot of the time for especially black and Hispanic people to be viewed with more suspicion when they come into a store. And I've been in stores and I've seen where people are like keeping a close eye on the one person. And I'm white, and when I was growing up most of my friends were white, and some of my friends shoplifted. And like there's this one guy, he looks pretty respectable, but like he would just go into a store and just take shit and, and leave. And I'm pretty sure he was more able to get away with that because not only was he white, but he came from this like upper class background and his whole like aesthetic and way of acting, it tapped into all these like things, these like signals, cultural signals that like, it's like he seems very respectable, like he doesn't seem like the kind of person who would do that. Uh, that's another example of how these things can play out. There can be these like cues of like race and class and things. I hear adults, like older adults, and I also hear sometimes younger people uh, talking about all sorts of biases that exist. Like I think there are biases against people with tattoos. Uh, they're often viewed as sort of like rougher and less wholesome. I've seen so many examples that just throw a wrench in that stereotype. Like when you actually uh, observe people's behavior, like once there was like a, a hawk actually fell out of the sky when I was on the street. It fell out of the sky and was injured. And this guy ran out, and he was this really big burly guy, and he was covered in tattoos, and he was like super gentle with this bird. Uh, and he like took the bird, and he, he like seemed to know how to handle it. He was very, very cautious to avoid like touching it any more than he needed to, and got it to an animal shelter. And he was kind of joking, he was like, well I feel like 
a need to care for these birds because after all I have these birds tattooed all over my body and he like showed me his back and I had this big eagle on it. And I thought that was really cool. It was this kind of affinity for the birds. But the point is that there are all these like ridiculous stereotypes out there. And you probably harbor a lot of them. I certainly harbored a lot of them. Like even though I was consciously aware of some of this racism, I still harbored a lot of racism against black and Hispanic people. And I'm still uncovering little things in my head from time to time that I was like, ooh, I had that thought, like where did that come from? There's like, there's all this cultural baggage we deal with. Um, I think that if you observe people's behavior, like you might have this narrative in your head, you might have some assumptions that you made about a person, try to become consciously aware of it and sort of like set it aside and then actually observe people's behavior. I think this is important because you may find that people like that you thought were like maybe a bad influence on your friends or like maybe it's not the best person for this person to be dating or like maybe it's your kids and you're like, oh this is a bad influence on my kids, this person. But you may find that when you observe their behavior more closely, they actually are a really good influence on that person. And conversely, you might have people that you initially like, and over time, if you really observe them closely, you're like, ooh, they're doing some things that are, are not good, and I want to step in, I want to intervene in those situations. Um, I know that myself, when I started actually observing people's behavior more closely, it was kind of appalling when I realized how many assumptions I had been making about other people on the basis of these like little heuristics, these cues, and how that allows racism and sexism and ageism and classism and all those sorts of things to seep in to our lives. And it, it, those things can have devastating consequences for people. Uh, and they can have devastating consequences of having people be subjected to like extra scrutiny, like the people who are just trying to shop and they're being treated like a shoplifter, and then they can have the other consequence too of you're not catching the actual shoplifter in your store because he's this like really clean cut looking white guy and you're not paying any attention to him. Like this is the kind of stuff that happens and it can happen in relationships, it can happen in business, uh, it can happen in all different aspects of life. Um, and yeah. So I think that this is this really awesome thing. If you can think about this and you can like live this out. So I would like to challenge you to, to start paying attention to people and try to become aware. Am I making any of these assumptions in my life? And like is then then like look at people and say like, well, what is this person actually like? What are they doing? I found that this is a really fulfilling thing to do. Uh, yeah, thank you.